<laughs> We've already played two games, so. We're fasting. <laughs> We're fasting. That's a good one. Except the biggest, the biggest the biggest that was fat sincere, I'd appreciate it. it. The biggest, biggest fat guy improvements between game two and game three is what they say. Yeah. So we have a long ways to go. Just <laughs> any snack would be good right now. <laughs> if you just showed up with a snack. Um, great, great game. Uh, really good win um, for, for our program. An outstanding uh, night for the fans and really cool environment. Um, great to see our team come back again and, and show resiliency. Um, I do think we improved in our special teams. I thought it got better. I thought they started strong against uh, Nebraska, and I think they improved. I think defensively we improved, and offensively, especially in the second half with the addition of the run game. I, I think we started to see some momentum there. Um, receivers still continue to be a positive uh, force for our offense and making plays. Um, and just overall, a really strong start for our program and a lot of optimism and hope looking forward to the UCLA game, which is uh, another great challenge for us and really fun to have these kind of opponents week in and week out. And players are excited about it, coaches are excited, and I think the fan base uh, will be as well. Um, really, really happy for Kai Nakua and his return and his debut. Just uh, again, I, I shared this after the game, after um, the Memphis game, and then the way that he finally came back and reestablished himself on our team. I was really, really happy for him in that regard. Um, uh, and I think Boise's a good team. They have great schemes, and they're really well coached, and um, it's a great college football game. So uh, questions, if you have some, I'll be glad to answer. Can you explain what you did uh, with, with Travis out, kind of the adjustments you made formation-wise, personnel-wise, and how you thought it worked? Um, a lot of it went to, um, to Logan to LA, and he was he's our next, I think, uh, most seasoned and experienced and physical player at the point of attack. And so based on the personnel that Boise had in the game, we used him as much as we could with Grant Rowley. And so really the next two most physical and experienced players we put in at the same time to try to compensate for Travis with their bigger sets against Boise. When there became smaller sets, we chose to put in more linebackers and play with fewer D linemen. Uh, again, because Travis isn't there and you can't replace Travis with one, so we used basically two D linemen to, to make up for it, a combination, or we used a couple linebackers uh, instead. And that seemed to match up better against their personnel and also give us the best chance of getting our best players on the field. Did you get Jordan Prater back? Was he available last week? He wasn't, and I don't think he'll be, he won't be available again this week as well. And so with Jordan, um, the issue is shifted. He's still not healthy, but it's shifted in addition to his injuries. He has a team discipline issue now also. And so possibly for the Michigan game would be as early as he could return. And before Nebraska, you hoped that Francis Bernard might be a UCLA guy? Still, I would say possible right now. I haven't heard anything yet today or or um, if that's going to happen or not, but that was the report going into the surgery and coming out of that it was possible for UCLA, and I don't have that confirmed yet. You've been so trending with uh, top fourth quarter finishes the last two games. What do you attribute that to, and, and what does it mean to the program to be able to do that? Um, I think the team is really close. I think there's great chemistry, and, and I think there's good players. Um, but I, I, a lot of this I attribute um, to the off-season training. Um, I think it was really hard. I think Coach Winter put them through the, the ropes. And I think some of that resiliency and conditioning is, is contributing. Uh, that's my theory at this point, plus a little bit more experience from a year ago at a lot of positions. So I think a combination of all, all of those things is helping us. Coach, what's the status of Louis Lapuaho? Um, the status is um, so Louis's been, uh, he has had team discipline um, uh, issued. Um, it's not going to require missing any games. We have a very clear policy in place for personal fouls. And, um, and so that's what he's faced up to. He's, uh, he made a mistake. He knows it. I know it. I think the world knows it. And the team certainly, um, we've addressed it and plan to move forward. And, and I'm comfortable with what has happened. You, have you heard from the CFOA on that? I haven't. Don't you expect something from them? Um, I, I really don't, um, but it'll be interesting to see if, if that happens. Um, but uh, if, if, their, if their statement is different, then we'll obviously do whatever is required.
you teach your defensive guys to be very aggressive when the ball's on the ground. Where's the balance? Because it looked like Louis had the ball on the ground, and then the guy came and jumped on top of him. Where's the balance as far as you know jumping in late and things oh, like I, that? I don't know if there is balance. I, I bet, and I've never seen it called when a guy's recovering a fumble if, if someone else jumps on him that that's a penalty. And so yeah, maybe by the letter of the, the rule it is, but I, I don't think that was the issue. I think he just reacted and and uh, wasn't composed. And on a positive note. Uh, so from last year, the first two games, I think there was 23 penalties. This year, it's nine. And um, so our team is playing a lot cleaner uh, football. And rather than 180-something yards and penalties, it's 80-something. And so I've actually been really pleased with um, the execution or lack of extra things that have been happening. Some people are saying this game Saturday is the most important in BYU's independence. <laughs> Would you uh, address that? Yeah, it's the next game in BYU's independence. As far as two ranked teams, though, and the Pac-12 thing, is there a significant added uh, importance to you? I think we can make it as big or as not as big as possible. Um, I, I think everyone knows my stance. I, mean, I, I try to coach our team hard every single game, and our players try to play hard every single game. And Yeah, it's fun that their teams are ranked, and it's fun that uh, both teams are good. Um, but to make more of it than that, uh, gosh. That would just be a distraction, and there's already enough distractions, so I just plan on coaching my team. What stands out to you about UCLA, particularly in offense? Uh, fast, athletic, throw and catch the ball well, really good scheme. Man, they played over 100 and something plays on offense in their last game against UNLV, so they go up tempo, and yeah, um, they're very explosive. What about the quarterback? Really, or? really skilled and poised for a, a young player, and I've been really impressed. Do you have any relationship with Jim Mora or Mazzoni at all? I, I don't. Um, only by reputation. Uh, but no, I don't have a personal relationship with either. Of the three games you've played, where do you think UCLA kind of, when you've seen them on film so far? Man, hard, hard to say. All three teams have been so distinct and, and each really good. I, I don't know who's the best team. Uh, they're all different. And the matchups might have something to do with it. I thought Nebraska was a good team. I think Boise was a good team. And now watching film, I think UCLA is good. But they're all different. So I don't know who's better. The rankings clearly after week three say UCLA is. Um, uh, we'll find out. I mean, we certainly respect them. But it's a different team than we just played the first two weeks. Pretty remarkable to have two freshman quarterbacks going head-to-head yeah. -head who have already had some pretty good early season success. Yeah, and both um, highly touted and highly recruited and showing that they should have been. And so. Yeah, pretty pretty fun for both programs to be thinking about the future with the quarterbacks there. How does Wadsworth strike you? He's kind of, uh, you know, for a lot of people come from nowhere, but uh, he's a local kid. And what, what has he given you? Man, a really unique story. So we didn't recruit him um, to start with. He signed with Hawaii, went on his mission, coming off a mission like a lot of LDS kids do. Then um, his mission president reaches out and said, man, would you have an interest? Then we have to tell everybody and all that. And um, we liked him as a special teams player. He didn't play much at Hawaii other than special teams. And so then he comes uh, in our program and has been hurt almost his entire career here. And this is his first time he's been healthy. And we put him in at the end of the Nebraska game looking for some more sure tackling. And that caught my eye. And uh, so he played really well in the fourth quarter. And then in this game, he did the same. So. He's a really good example of just patience and diligence, and um, but really it's the first time he's been truly healthy. And 